Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about The Expanse Season 4, Episode 4, it is called Retrograde. So, full spoilers for the episode as always. Once again, this picks up right where the last one left off, that seems to be a theme. I'm shocked, I tell you. Well, I mean, some shows, you know, advance in time, this show, I mean, I guess it typically does this, but especially this season, because that's twice in a row now, it's had like a moment at the end of an episode and immediately like right up yeah. yeah and both and both times it was uh murtry <laughs> shooting someone <laughs> it's becoming a bit of a trend uh and amos right away fires in and starts trying to kick the shit out of him unfortunately he's got obviously he's got he's all his uh security forces around him to sort of pull amos off and uh they're kicking him and amos or sorry murtry rather says uh, he's not worth the effort, or he's not worth the trouble it would be for killing him. Um, which to me says, at least right now, one thing that's holding him back is because, you know, holding the the Rossi crew, the Rossi crew, they are not, you know, you know, part of these settlers. They yeah. they are, they've been sent in with them. Uh, they they're borderline official ambassadors. Yeah. So he's at least right. I mean, admittedly, I, I don't doubt that if he gets pissed off enough that he might fly off the handle. But at least right now, that's keeping him. You mean like later in this episode? Like, yeah, okay. By the end of the episode, he's already kind of there, admittedly. But you know, that, but that, that's what's holding him off right now. It is, yes, and I think it is worth noting that you know he he does have a li- not a moral line, but more just uh, a line of how much effort is something worth the the the, the equivalent power that it's going to take. Yeah, basically, so... he doesn't want to do the paperwork. <laughs> I mean. I don't blame him necessarily if, if that's the reasoning, but uh, so we have obviously they call this in. Uh, Naomi goes on the run with Lucia, who is now terrified that Marjorie's coming for her uh, because he's seen her talking to people. She was talking to the others that were already gunned down, and Naomi calls Holden, tells him what's going on. And he's like, "What? Why? What's happening?" Holden calls calls Murtry and they have a bit of a debate. Uh, where he's like, hey, what are you doing? You can't just shoot people. He's like, oh, I'm shooting terrorists. They, they, they killed my people. You do the same. If they killed your people, he's like, no, you're not the law here. You can't just go around shooting people. And then, and before he even, much is even threatening anything, Holden just says, if Naomi gets hurt, you're dead. <laughs> like, let me make that clear right now. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, I, I have no intention of harming her, but she's aiding a criminal, so you should tell her to turn herself in. So Holden's like on his way. Uh, to the ship because that's where Naomi and Lucia, uh, Lucia are going because they can maybe hide there uh, but of course Murtry kind of ex- expects that and sends a, a cart with a couple of guys so the, the ship's actually been guarded uh, yeah. b- b- by the time they get there and Naomi's out of breath they're hiding under this rock uh, by the time the nightfall comes like uh, Lucia gets shot because she stands up at one point because she's kind of like caring about Naomi and we find out that she was behind the, uh, the the ship malfunction it was intentional although she does say that no one was supposed to get hurt it sounds like they wanted to sabotage them coming here but not necessarily actually kill them mm. uh, so I'm sure we'll get more details about oh I'm sure yeah. uh, as we go but she does admit to that uh, Naomi's clearly struggling uh, which Holden even can tell over the over the comms. He's like, she's hurt, and Alex kind of fesses up and says, "Look, she's she's not taken to the gravity meds, and she promised me not to tell yeah. you." It, it, it's she's not well, but Murtry hasn't hurt her. I think is the important distinction with why yeah. Alex has to speak up. Uh, of course, Naomi has a really smart plan at one point, uh, which they set up last episode that they can remote control the weapons on the the ship because they used mm-hmm. obviously they used the the missile last ep- episode. Uh, Naomi gets her, her data pad out and makes the turret come on <laughs> and start like firing at Murtry after he shoots Lucia. Lucia gets injured. Lucia is shot in yeah. this. This 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 whole bit it, so. it feels like trench warfare. Yeah. Um, and it's a good moment it's a really big big moment because it feels like okay she's kind of fighting back a little bit of course um it's not long after this that uh, they all show up they get her inside the ship and it's like okay we have to go into orbit we have to get naomi out of here and lucia's on the ship as well at this point uh, she's also in the med bay because she's got, yeah. been shot obviously <laughs> and the so alice is taking off and holden basically says his goodbyes and she's like you're staying here's like yeah but i'm coming back but you know i'm going out there but notably and this is quite, you know, a, a suitable little moment here, is he's leaving, he goes to the armory and takes out a gun. Like, he makes sure he's armed before he leaves, because we're he's at that point. not going out there without that. And I really liked, uh, as he walks out, there's the big western shot of them at either side of the, the screen. Yeah. And it looks, uh, it looks really nice. 
uh, and Murtry's just babbling on. I was like, ah, there's no intention of hurting her, but she's in the criminal and blah, 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 blah. And Holden just walks up and punches him in the face, kicks the gun out of his hand and says, this is over. You're not in charge. Um, and it's very, it's very definitive and Holden very much wins the moment, which tells me that... It essentially pulls rank. Yeah, which tells me that Murtry's about to become very dangerous. Yep. Uh, because Holden has a smirk in his face. The final shot of the episode is Holden walking, you know, past the camera with a smirk in his face as we see the the, the Rossi thinking he's won. Yeah, but, but I'll just well, I'll describe the shot because it's beautiful. The, the Rossi's behind him. Actually, you, you can see that the, the thrusters, the you know, the smoke from the ship. Yeah, yeah, going up behind him. Uh, it's a really nice shot. Um, so. I mean, that, that was their stuff in, in the episode, and I, I kind of summed it up really quickly because there's not, not a lot of details to it, but it, like, uh, it was very action-packed, a lot of tension because, you know, Murtry's kind of actively almost hunting one of them now. I mean, he's not really going after Naomi, but she's in the crossfires because she's with the other person. And... Oh, definitely. And if this is what he's like when he's quote-unquote in charge, what's mm. he going to be like when he feels like he's been humiliated and he's got to prove himself now? Yeah, obviously... Uh, Amos has been uh, locked up, and he tries to like sort of threaten his way out at one point with uh with uh Chandra. Yes, that uh, sounds familiar. Chandra, I think it's Chandra. Yeah, Chandra. Yeah, I got it right. Uh, and she just kind of talks him down, but yeah, obviously Holden's on his way to get to Amos because he's. Oh, of course. I mean, because Alex is on the ship with Naomi. Like, they, they, you know, he only has he, that as backup. backup. Yeah. Um, and obviously, Doctor Akeu has been kind of friendly, and they're still in touch after they drop her off back at base. Uh, and her and her scientist buddy up in orbit uh, notice there's a lot more activity around the planet. There seems to be more of these machines spinning up. Yeah. Um. Like, and it's it's spread around the the continent, not just you know that area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they also mentioned there's like three or four islands at one part of the planet that are heating up. Yeah, yeah. There's there's That's... the thermal activity as well as the you know, the, the the seismic activity, I guess. Yeah, but what really struck me about it on the map, anyway, and it, I mean maybe it doesn't mean much, but it looked like they were in a straight line. It looked like it was very almost like. Oh, I think no, that is yeah. important. I think in the same way that the the lightning strikes were, more or less, you know, it was a straight line, right, around uh, from target to target. I think it's very clear like that there is a straight line conductor going through the planet for something for something what was the purpose of this planet what did the uh the beings behind the proto molecule do to it what did they what did they yeah, engineer yeah. it for exactly uh, and uh, i dread to imagine is this a singular in purpose and what i mean by that is is this planet unique to the other ones through the other gates or do they all have the same function or does each one have its own individual function for them like you know like uh, that's something that we would do obviously right I, now i mean my gut inst again i'm Based on some very little here, but my gut instinct is they're all kind of the same. They're built to specification. It's kind of like okay, you know, if we went out and terraformed planets to suit Earth-like conditions, we'd they'd kind of all end up looking pretty similar. And but, I'm not saying they did this; it was a terraforming to you know for them to live there. But whatever they did, I feel like it probably was something they were doing on all the planets they colonized. I, so I, to speak. I'm just wondering if as a maybe because maybe like each one has a particular benefit and purpose, so. Like maybe you know, you know, I mean, it may all be the same. I mean, I mean, obviously, but even if we get to multiple planets this this se- well, even this season, but even just throughout the show, I highly doubt we're going to explore enough to like get a grasp of what thousands of planets have got. You know, that are different. But yeah. uh, I'm just wondering if like it, it would vary a little bit depending on the climate of the planet. You know, because different planets have different values. You know, uh, as we, as we you. as we pointed out in this this episode, the the life here is kind of machine like because it's it it comes from iron as opposed to whatever else. Yeah, yeah. So. But again, I think it's it's uh, uh, it's. I mean, to be to be established that it was firmly life, was it still just hypotheses? Um, I'd have to go back and check the exact phrase. I think I think she said it was life. Okay, fair enough. Um, I I remember the debate of whether or not it might be life, but I wasn't sure that they had a concrete answer that it was. Um, but um, what I was kind of getting at is, I think it's notable that this world is very habitable. You know, as much as you know the the you know the the belters and such need the the gravity meds, it's breathable air. I don't know how much they did this. Did did they terraform the planet to be like this, or did they happen to find this coincidentally perfectly you know habitable planet? Which again, there's plenty of planets out there that could be habitable, but was it chosen 
by the proton molecule for that reason? Or did they make it this way when they uh, when they did whatever they did uh, with these these machines? You know, did they change the atmosphere into something like this? Well, given that the proto molecule has been running around in the same climates as all the humans, it stands to reason that it has maybe similar requirements. That said, though, the proto molecule being when we had that walking around could go outside without a breather as well. So it, it could, yeah. So maybe uh, maybe it doesn't matter to, the, to whoever built. Uh, but maybe, the, but, well, that's the thing. Is it the proto molecule? Is that the tool? that changes the world into what the species that built it can then Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because what I was going to say is that the, the protomolecule that we see, we have to remember that the protomolecule was created or at least came from whoever built it. it th that doesn't necessarily mean that the requirements that that thing has matches the requirements that the life that built it has. Right, because obviously we can send shit into space, no problem, but we can't go into space, no problem. Exactly, so a uh, lot, lot of questions there about the planet. Uh, I don't. Th I don't really have a beginnings to really speculate. To be honest, we have no, so little it, information was, at this point. Well, it's kind of baseless speculation, but I just you know I wanted to find things that are interesting me about this right now. I did enjoy uh, the guy up in orbit. Uh, basically, I mean, I don't even think he was lying. But like, Murtry calls for his. Oh, use your satellites to like find these these escaped prisoners. And he's like, oh, sorry, we're going behind the the, the shadow of the planet. Uh, Eleven hours and forty three minutes till we can talk to you again. Bye. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure he's talking to Okayu uh, uh, after that. After that, and it doesn't—you know—it's still the same night. So I think he was just straight up lying. Um, yeah, but you would, wouldn't you? Sciencey reasons. Well, it cuts back to him giving them the middle, middle finger. So I mean, there's not a lot of character for this guy, but they've established that he's not a dick bag at the very least. And he's like, yeah, and 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 he's got enough of a spine to stand up to Murtry. At a distance. At, at a least. distance, yeah. I don't think in person he's going to stand up to Murtry. I don't either, but I think this is better than nothing. Yeah. So so that was that stuff. Um, and that was that was pretty much all the planet stuff, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, because I think the big thing, maybe the more interesting plot to talk about this episode actually gets a lot of time, is because we, we didn't have any Ashford or uh, Drummer uh, last episode, and we come back to them and they've captured... Uh, well, at least one of the belt or sub factions captured this this guy, this Marcus, and they've got him, and the the you know the question a little bit, and what we find out very quickly, because uh, Drummer, because he, he, he tries bargaining with them, and Drummer very quickly says, "I'm a friend of Naomi Nagata," so there's only one way you're leaving this, and it's like, okay, so this guy knew Naomi. What's going oh, on here? There's a history here. Uh, so we're interested in a character from her past, and uh, do you know what I, I like about this? I love that we're getting to know someone from her past, but it has nothing to do with Naomi's plot. I, I like that it's and completely she's separate. Nothing to do with that. You know, she's even if it, if it wasn't to do with her plot, she's not there. We're not introduced to it through. Her. No, uh, well, that's what I mean. That's that's exactly what I mean. Is because basically what this does is that it doesn't bog down her plot where there's all this drama right away. By the time she runs into him, assuming he survives long enough for that to happen, which he probably will because it's such an obvious thing to do eventually, yeah. is that it'll mean something to us when they're in the room together because, oh, we've already we've already gotten to know him. And it, oh, matters, agree, yeah. it matters to us now that there is some sort of confrontation. And I went off mic there because the cat was pushing something off the desk. Um, <laughs> Sorry, you are in the middle of a sentence and I was just like, okay. So, that's really interesting to me. So, they, they, you know, she questioned, drummer questions, and we find out that her and Naomi, or sorry, him and Naomi had a kid together. They have a son, they have Philip. Mm. And she, drummer asks where, where Philip is, uh, which doesn't really get a clear answer. Um, Not surprising, given the scenario here. And she, she says that you made Naomi kill for you, and then she got away. Uh, and he's like, oh, that's the story she's telling. So it's, it's painting this picture that she got caught up in some sort of I don't want to quite say Bonnie and Clyde this shit with this guy in our sort of youth, but well, I think that is a a reasonable feeling that we're getting. Yeah, into. I mean, more more with a political agenda though. It's more of a, a revolutionary thing where they they attacked a ship and Naomi, uh, as he puts it, felt guilt over it afterwards. But the way he's telling it is that no, she was very much for doing it in the first place. It was just after the fact that she was distraught by it and guilty. Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely feels like it was maybe even her idea to begin with. Yeah, I mean, I can not necessarily trust them. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure Naomi's going to have her own side to the story when we. I think, I think it means more if if it's to some degree true that yeah, she was into that and she did have those opinions. And I think you know that'll be interesting. To see. Okay, but obviously she's very oh, absolutely person now. Oh, absolutely. I, I what I think though is that I I do think it's not going to sound quite as bad as he puts it. 
there's going to be something to it that makes it a little bit you, you might be right like, I think for me it might be more interesting if no she kind of was a bit terrible until whatever happened that changed her mind for me that's kind of interesting if if it is as bad as it seems and she has to own that and live with that that's kind of interesting for me yeah no i can't argue um so more interesting in that stuff though to be honest because i mean that stuff's fine okay so there's gonna be some naomi stuff later that that, mm-hmm. that gives us a, a sort of like tangential connection to who this guy is and why yeah. we should care but i think the more interesting stuff with them is what it builds for the rest of the episode because we get a lot more mythology with the factions in the opa and i can't remember the names of them for, for, the, for the life of me because oh all... no there's like four or five of them aren't there? yeah um we know that you know drummers representing fred johnson and uh we have uh, Ashford representing Dawes, right? Um, yeah. And and their ships. Uh, I think Fred's is the Tycho, and then the other one's Ceres, which is not a ship. But you know, you know what I mean. Like they, they represent those places, right? That's Tycho what... was the the station, right? Tycho station, yeah, yeah. We were there a ton, a ton season two and three. Oh yeah, yeah. I just meant you know, if we're specifying which is a ship and not a ship, that's borderline not a ship. Okay, sure. Yeah, it's a sta- it's a station, and uh, you know the 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 ash well not asteroid. Is it an asteroid? Ceres. It's an asteroid? Okay, yeah. Um, so, we have them representing them, then we have these other three people representing these other these other factions. And they come in, and before we get to that even, there's like a sort of bluff moment where there's this other ship's following them, and it's really big and dangerous, so they, they can kind of outrun it, and they're, fly, they're you know flying away from it. And they basically play a little game of bluff, but they pretend that there's, there's something wrong with the ship, and like they're off to, the drummer leaves to go fix it. And they leave Ashford there. And this is great because it kind of plays upon our expectations that Ashford's the one who's maybe more likely to betray the truce. Out of the two characters that we, we spend time with, but you know, mm. him and Drummer, he's the one we expect might, you know, sort of like, you know... He's a bit older and jaded, a bit yeah. better. But, you know, go, go a bit more pro-belter and maybe break the truce and be tempted to, you know, screw over the inners, right? Yeah. And he's talking to... and He's talking to Marcus and Marcus is sort of speaking up, you know, what he's, what he's done and what he wants to do and... Uh, how how much you know Ashford even inspired him to to an extent. I oh, used to be this guy. I used to do all these things, and you know we used to take things for ourselves. And you know what I did used to be called a win, things like that. And I, I might be mixing up some of what he said here with what he says later when he's making a speech to everyone because he it, it kind of gives a little bit of both. But um, he talks about how the inners are weak right now, and the Mars that we fought isn't the Mars that's there now. Which uh, what I love about this is this is actually tying nicely into Bobby's story and what we've been learning on Mars without yeah. like any direct character stuff. It's just, no, no, no. It, we understand what he's saying because we've seen the examples of this on yeah, Mars. There's, there's no way that this, it doesn't feel like forced or, or, or like, you know, exposition. It's like, no, we are seeing this firsthand through Bobby. We are understanding the scenario on Mars. Uh, this episode better than ever, I would say. Um, yeah. And then, you know, we have this, just kind of, like, other people are aware of this too. Yeah, yeah, both this plot and the Mars plot have a lot of good mythology stuff sort of seeping in this episode. Yeah. Um, And it's when he really, like, they get distracted for a second and Astro's like, okay, so what were you saying about Mars? And it's at this point where Mark says, nah, we'll finish this conversation. Because it's it's that moment he clocks what's happening. And Drummer comes back in afterwards and says, well, it was worth a try. You know, (laughs) like, you know, and the part, I mean, the ship chasing them was real. That wasn't, like, a fake out. But it's at the end of this scene, all of the other OPA ships, all their, you know, uh, allies and factions all show up. And it's like, okay, now this ship is vastly outnumbered. There's an entire fleet. Scare uh, them off. Yeah. I say fleet, it's like six. But I mean, still, six versus one. S- six to one, yeah. yeah. Like, what are they going to do? So, and then we have this the scene later where it's the, the heads of these factions. So there's three heads of the factions, plus you've got Drummer, and you've got Ashford representing their two uh, leaders. Yep. Uh, and then you get these other three. And they're going to space him. They're just going to kill him outright. It's like, okay, this is it. But Marcus starts talking. And as Ashford says later in a scene after this, he's got the gift of talking. Like, he's, he's good at winning people over with his speech. But he, he starts talking about, uh, you know, what he still is like, hey, I'll, you know, I'll give all the stuff back over to the, the other factions. And I'll, I'll, uh, even the money we made from the parts from the, sh- the ship that we dismantled. Um, and he says, you know what? I will stand down. I won't attack any more inners as long as the treaty is intact. But as soon as that piece, that truce is broken, and they will break it, uh, like, I'm going to be there. And yeah. one of the things that I really loved as well is the, is the way he phrased, because again, this is how good he is at talking, and the script has to be good to really sell this, because I have to, I have to hear the good talking. <laughs> as it were. Oh, definitely. And you have to have the, you know, an actor who, who has enough charisma to pull. 
yeah, I, I, do you know what? It's funny because I asked because we watched this episode two days ago, and the reason why this episode's a little bit later going out is because uh, we had some tech issues and we couldn't record, and then we couldn't record yesterday because yesterday you were away at a Star Wars marathon and I was doing my yeah, Christmas stream, so we had to wait till today. So I actually almost watched the episode again. I, I, I skipped. I, I sort of rushed through a couple of scenes that I remember quite well, but I, these scenes with him particularly, I listened to the whole things again because I really wanted to take all the information in, mm. and. One of the parts, that, and I, the second time especially that I really liked, is when he's talking about, um, yeah, you've, you've, you know, the inners have invited us to the table right now because they feel quite weak because of all these rings. It's made them kind of scared. And they're going to, like, sort of keep us along for the ride and keep us happy until they feel strong again. And then they're strong enough to ignore us again. And they'll start ignoring us once more. And the sad truth is, is that he might be right. I Obviously, we hope he's not, but he might be right probably is because humans are shit <laughs> humans are shit yes uh and what's great about this is when they get to the end of this this little speech uh so there's three other faction leaders and one says oh i vote we take what he's offering and pardon him and you know, whatever and then the second one does that and because uh, because ashford speaks first ashford says oh you know well i speak for blah blah you know i speak for dawes and you know death sentence right yeah. and then two of the three that are there say no let's accept this and i guess the third one and ashford's looking worried right and this per this woman in the middle the, the one of the leaders uh puts the thumbs down and ashford like he almost breathes a sigh of release, like, okay we've got a, we've got a majority because drummer's going to vote with us and as soon as he he had that sigh, i was like oh drummer's not going to vote with him yeah uh, i think there's a moment earlier on as well where he's he, he uh, ashford tries to tell him to shut up and one of the other leaders is like, no, 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 it's his last words. Let him keep talking. Yeah. And I think Drummer kind of makes a point of going, we'll, we'll hear him out. And Ashford looks a little concerned there as well. But what I like about this is that, because afterwards he says, oh, he, he, he won you over with his words. And Drummer makes it very clear, no, he didn't. I still hate his guts. But here's the thing. If I use my vote to win a 3-2 majority, that's two factions who are going to feel like they've not been listened to and might lead to some sort of OPA civil war, right? Mm. However, now, if he breaks what he said, that he wouldn't attack any ships and he'd he stop pirating as long as the truce is in place, if he breaks that, he's actively disobeying every single faction. And I was like, she's got a point. But Ashford equally says, yeah, but that's if we catch him. And he's quite, you know, sly. Like, we got lucky getting him this time. So... Yeah. But I think at the same time, Drummer's kind of right in that... It's a lot safer because Ashford will forgive her, and they'll get along still. Mm. So it doesn't, it, you know, it, it, at worst that she's only really pissing off one faction, and she was kind of on the fence anyway. Yeah, I have to say Ashford. I mean, I liked Ashford a lot last season, and I like Drummer a lot. I think this episode, especially this season, is really like I think Ashford's a really interesting character who is really growing because because they play their expectations where you're thinking he is the one that's more likely to turn right during some of these scenes. But by the end of the episode, it really feels like, no, he's really, you know, he wants to uphold this truce. He really wants to, you know... He, he has a lot more of a moral centre than you might have expected. Yeah. Um, I really, I really appreciated that. And I, I think it's... It, it, this show is doing a good job. Because I heard someone complain. This was before... I think we'd watched maybe the first episode already and I saw someone complain online that anything outside of the planet, outside of New Terror or, or Elos... What, the, the subplots weren't as good, right? The side plots and the other characters weren't wait, as good. Wait, there are people that think that? Yeah. And obviously I, I read that, I've only watched my episode, like, oh, I hope I don't agree with that. You know, like, I'm not letting it get into too much, but like hoping that that's not going to be the case when I watch them, right? And after this episode especially, I'm like, no, I, th I think the Mars plot is offering a lot of really interesting stuff. I think this plot, especially this episode, this the, the stuff with Ashford and Picking Drummer. Up. Like before this yeah. episode, I probably would have given you that one. But I think this episode really put it into... Oh no, now it's adding to the larger mythology because it's connecting to the Mars stuff. It's given us this new interesting character, but it's also... That, that, this whole idea of all these factions in the OP, I'm sure we've heard about these before, but this was really seen it in practice. And like yeah. the, the idea they don't want to start an OPA civil war or a Belter civil war, whatever, whatever one's more applicable here, like is really interesting. And that's it a concern. I think, you know, as much as I'm loving the, the stuff on the planet, we, we we know I'm loving the stuff on the planet, right? Yeah. Because that's, okay, that's our main crew. That's kind of the, technically that's the centerpiece of the show. That's the, the new frontier, all this un, unknown stuff. 
I think I'm in overall. I think if I, if I had to pick, okay, I'm only watching one plot line right now. I'm gonna go with Bobby. I'm, oh, that's I'm interesting. loving that stuff I'm as I'm loving well, following her and, and you know the and it's just so focused. Do you, know, do you know what's so great about the, the, the Ashworth and Drummer stuff as well is that when Drummer first started showing up, she only showed up here or there. Like she wasn't like a consistent character to the point where I remember the second or third time she showed up, we had a, a we, we didn't know her name and we're trying to like we were like, Oh the the, the weird accent lady, like, like we didn't yeah. have a thing for her. And I feel like last season especially she started to become more of a major like recurring character and then this season she she's her and Ashford are the two that are the central to the side plot. They have their own side plot together. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And it feels vital to the, the world building of the show where we have that plus obviously our main crew, and then we got Earth with the Vasarala. She's only got one scene this episode, but obviously we can we can mix them because there was no Ashford and drama last episode. So obviously we, we mix around depending on who's yeah. Relevant. Ba basically, the the core crew on the on the planet will presumably retain every episode. Probably yeah, and the others will rotate around. Yeah, as and when they needed because. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, no, I I love this Belter stuff. This uh, this this episode. Uh, probably my oh, favorite. Part, it's probably my favorite part of the episode. Honestly, is is this Belter stuff. Although you just I said really you love the Mars stuff. So, no, I, well, <laughs> I think in this particular episode, I think this Belter stuff is the best. I'm telling you, as yeah. the seasons are up to four episodes, I would say that the Mars stuff has been my favorite part overall. Sure. Even though. Maybe individual episodes or individual parts are not as I, strong as other bits. I, I just, I, I was really into it, and I think it's, it's just that thing really. Like, has drummer kind of like given in? And it's like, no, no, she's actually playing the game. She's, she's actually thinking ahead and playing smartly. Um, yeah. So I'm really liking that. Uh, so we'll mention Vassarella briefly. She has one scene. It's a really funny little scene, but it's, it's just, it's her and the, it's basically sending a message to Holden. It's like, so there's lightning strikes happening. There's all this like seismic activity. And, you know, I know you've got a busy schedule, Holden, but if you could please pick up a comms and tell me what the F is going And you, you knew she was going to yell and drop an F bomb. As, you as knew that's soon as she going. starts, you're like, and T minus 12 seconds till swearing. <laughs> because that's just what she's like now. And I kind of love it. She's great. And again, it's, I think we saw this last episode, but it just feels really natural. And because when, when we say, oh, you know, it's coming, it's because you know her character and you know this is what she sounds like. Uh, and actually, slight uh, alteration. I said she's only got one scene. That's technically true, but she's actually on TV in one of the scenes of Mars. But what I liked about this is that this scene set, you know, the woman comes in and says, it's time for your interview. And then later on, we see that interview on TV. It's a really nice little bit of following that through without, is, yeah. without actually okay. having a scene of her sitting down and, like, you know, doing the, the, the usual, like, you know, in the studio, watching her react to the questions and stuff. It was just... Which can, can be kind of awkward to watch, to film. It, it, it just depends. It depends if, there, if there's going to be dramatic beats there that are relevant, that are worth exploring. And, yeah. Uh, here, no, it's just a nice little bit of, like, continuity. Like, okay, here's the interview later on on Mars. Mm. And speaking of Mars... Bobby tries to inform her superior. Uh, she she feels guilty, basically. Yeah, she, she tries to inform her superior that she was in on in this 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 plight to steal some equipment, and says it wasn't weapons, uh, but she was in on it. And he says, "What you get paid for it?" And she's like, "No, I get blackmailed." And he's like, "Okay." And he, he seems like he's been a decent enough guy, and kind of like, "Okay, I like, hate to you're a good worker. I don't want to lose you over this." And then it kind of turns, and he's like, "Besides, there's always a chance we could do it again and make it a bit of a." bit of a thing we can make some money off of this you and me and she's like what no i don't want to do that and she quits she, she actually just quits because she doesn't want to be that yeah. um i mean there's some really interesting stuff she's at the she's at the, the, the job market or the job you know uh, what Center. Was it? well yeah but not everyone calls it that i'm i'm uh yeah. i'm trying to think what she called it but anyway she's 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 looking for a job she's looking for openings coming up and she runs into that guy she's been kind of flirting with um i, I mean Flirting may not be the right word. It's, it's like, I guess she, it is a love interest, but they don't flirt in the way that most people, because she's Bobby. It's, she's not. It's, they'll get a drink occasionally. Yeah. But they go for a drink, and there's some really interesting stuff here uh, to talk about where Martians are so built around the idea of being at war and having a big military that because it's peacetime, all of a sudden there's tons of veterans who have no jobs and nowhere to live, and they're all back home for the first time. Yeah, this is this this is kind of. I think we, we kind of spoke on this a little bit last episode, um, but well, this is the stuff that it's, it, I'm really into. Yeah, it's the line where she says that growing up, she never knew anyone that was unemployed, and now there's like queues of people looking for jobs, and she's never seen that before. Yeah, it's it's fascinating, isn't it? But because it, but it it's may, not even like in a post-war world where they have to rebuild all the stuff. There was a 
a, a piece. They, they didn't mm. win necessarily, but there, there was a, there was a piece, and they're they're dismantling their ships. They don't need to you know rebuild. You know their their, their homes weren't destroyed or anything like that. Yeah, and it's just, that's really fascinating idea that so many of their people are away in the military. You know in space at all times that because they're rotating obviously they have leave and come home for a period and whatnot but like there's so many of their people are out there consistently that they've only ever had to cater for so many people on mars at one time and now yeah. all of a sudden all these people are here they need work they need like I, i'm scared for their resources food etc um mm, yeah maybe you know and i, and I guess what there's something to before as well is you know, before they had Earth as a, a common enemy, they, 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 a war, it was okay. There wasn't political factions because it was, right, stop Earth, that's it. Yeah. But every, every Martian thought the same thing. Now that they're in peacetime, they're going to develop different ideologies. And yeah, there's going to, yeah, there's going to be, yeah, there's going to be like conflicting ideologies, more importantly. Uh, where... I, I think uh, we should not be as worried about the, uh, the Belter Civil War as we should be about the Martian Civil War. Or even Earth. I mean, it's not really a civil war, but like if Vassarala's got opposition, it's not. I mean, it's not leading to war necessarily, but already there's a debate. I mean, maybe you could argue that Earth, because it's the it's the one that started everything, it's always been that way because <laughs> it kind of has. But <laughs> yeah, I think I think I suspect Earth is less likely to break out into a civil war in the sense of she's being challenged in a UN post. Oh, right? sh 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 what I'm saying is though is I, I even said it's not civil. I said I'm just saying that as soon as peacetime started, all of a sudden there's opposition from within. Oh. Course, all yeah, of a sudden um, like no one no one was like trying to challenge a position while they were in the middle of the crisis but now the crisis is over it's like okay now we just differ on what to do I, with the future I, I think here's the key difference uh, at least in my mind is it's all mars has ever known sure yeah, oh, sure, oh no had, absolutely well, so, 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 same with the belt the, the belt has always been unified in this idea that we're separate we're poor we're the ones who are preyed upon yeah. and then all of a sudden there's this idea of like Cap, you know, almost capitalizing on the moment where everyone thinks it's peacetime and capitalizing on these new rings and these new places we can go. No, there is, but I think the fact the belt that kind of separates them from Mars in Mario, which is why I would be more concerned about Mars, is that uh, the belt they already have these various factions within them. They're they're a, a looser knit group. Right there, yes, they're all belters, but there are there have always been these communities within. The oh belt. yeah, no, there's definitely a difference. I'm just I'm correlating. How, yeah. how this kind of it's affecting all three of them in some way earth may be less so because it's just used to being you know all different opinions right because that's just where everyone started mars because it's been so unified and always had one goal so it's been in constant kind of like if not war then at least you know tense times you know the cold war at the very least right uh, yeah yeah and then the bell like is always been kind of what it has been but it's always been the outsider underdog but it, which yeah. But, so they're all different, but this the, the the events of the ring and the peacetime have affected all three of them, and they're all they're all splintering in different ways, or at least there's the threat of it. You know, that's what that's what drummers trying to protect. Drummers try to stop them splintering. Which I mean, tells you you'll they'll probably fail. In some <laughs> probably way, right? fail. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's where the story yeah. comes from. But th then but I think it'll be the unexpected on Mars in comparison. Yeah, um, so you have these conflicting, and it's notable, the only thing that she really gets is a benefit for being, I mean, maybe there's more, but the only thing we know about that she gets is a benefit for, for being in the military, as a veteran, is uh, free booze, <laughs> like that, like, and that's almost a really cynical, like, yeah, but how does that help her, really? Like, she gets to drown her sorrows, but it doesn't really help her in life. And that's, I assume, not a state-funded thing, I, I assume oh, that's just this bar being like, hey, you know, we're gonna do something for but it, no, but if you think about it, it does sound like that sort of thing where oh, we'll keep them happy with free booze, even though everything else is is terrible. Like, yeah, I mean, she's living with her family, like you know, uh, her family in this, you know, not like close family. It's it's her brother. Oh, she's, she's living with her brother, right? You know, it's just like okay, random. Her brother, who, her brother who has a, a wife and a kid. Well, it's not this kid. I, don't, I think he's got a wife, but like, you know, it's like it's like their family. She's sort of like imposing in on. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's not like a family home. It's it's her family's home that they have started you know they have their own family yeah so yeah, yeah it, it definitely feels like already okay she she doesn't have anywhere to live of her own yeah um and she comes back kind of drunk and she says you know her brothers try to help her and like get, get her sobered up and the kid comes in and he's like oh bobby you're looking a bit worse for the wheel there it's like oh i lost my job today and he realizes immediately that it's this is his fault because of what he was involved in and he tries to say sorry he says that a couple of times 
uh and then eventually like the brother says hey you know there's maybe some positions open up at my place you know just custodial work and i know it's not what you want but and it's the it's the, the son jumps in and says no nah, like she's a war hero she shouldn't have to you know that's beneath her right she shouldn't be a janitor yeah is the line. and she just grabs him like she grabs the son puts him up against the wall our brother's just kind of watching like bobby let you know let him go like, not, not angrily not not thinking she'll actually hurt him but just like you know you're being a bit rough like you know calm down and she's like you don't get to tell me what's beneath me. You don't get to judge me. You don't get to like say what was important to me. You don't get to do any of these things. And it, this is very much, you know, if you've ever seen anything like a, like First Blood, which is about you know Rambo coming back after Vietnam and everyone kind of like, like it's not the exact same because it's not, not people aren't vilifying her like people in Vietnam were vilified for coming when they came back, mm-hmm. uh, for being part of this you know really kind of nasty war that no one really wanted to be in, um, but. It's this kind of thing where the veterans who came back are almost this weird burden and no one at home really understands what they're going through or, you know, what it was like to be out there. Um, Yeah, and then you have this on top of it of Bobby is so intent on being a good Martian, right? That's her whole thing that to her, you know, he's, you know, the the nephew's going, you shouldn't be a Janet, that's beneath you. She's like, no, no, no. What's beneath me is not having a job, not contributing to society, not Mm. doing my bit. She'll do anything if if it means that she feels like purpose but more interesting than that when she was having the beer with the guy she said um you know does this place feel different to you that's what led to the unemployment talk and all that she she basically said it doesn't feel the same like it's not her mars anymore uh which is a very scary kind of line of thinking to get into you know i don't want to use the phrase make mars great again but you you almost start to like like it's that kind of and i'm not saying she thinks like that i'm saying no but you can see there will be a political faction that that we need war with earth to keep society together yes because we don't know how to operate any other way um just like certain political parties we need to make everyone scared of immigrants because that's what makes everything that makes all the gears turn because that's exactly. everyone does what we want them to do and expects us to do kind of thing um so there's a lot of interesting things at play here and then you have bobby who gets arrested uh, for for the stolen goods the police show up during this scene even uh, they come in yeah. they take her away she's in a cell the, the, the corrupt cop um uh martin shows us double check his name we should know yeah, his name. it was the supervisor that turned her in after yes a- after she you know was like well i'm not making you money by doing something illegal and wrong yes uh, he was like well screw you then so martin shows up at the cell uh sort of makes a dig about oh you didn't have anyone else you could call and she just says that offer is it still open and he's like, well, are you working at the, the dock still? And she's like, nah. <laughs> like, well, that's a little bit different then, because now instead of just doing the odd little thing to help because you work there, now you're basically just be working for me full time, uh, doing whatever. It's uh, very reminiscent of what happened with the nephew of the drugs. Yeah, it's, it, this is... Um, she's fallen into a, a bad place. Now, may, and may, maybe these people won't be as bad as we think they are, but it's hard to not think of them as just thugs and, you know, organized crime, because that's what it feels like. It's, it's, that's the way they're operating. We don't know cause, what their agenda is I mean, a, a beyond just making money, which it might just be, let's just make money. Uh, maybe, maybe the money's to fund something, though. Maybe it is a political thing. Is it funding kind of to change Mars? Is it funding to take over maybe. Mars? Uh, do they have an ideology and does Bobby agree with that ideology is she conflicted but you can kind of see this is kind of the story of how someone comes back from a war right and we've seen you know stories about this we you know hear about it happening where someone comes back from a war and they do fall in with some really bad people or they they end up in a cult or they end up whatever like because they just don't know how to live again we've covered other TV shows with this exact story oh Quarry yeah come back yeah. yeah exactly uh, this is this is Expanse doing Quarry, and Quarry is fantastic. <laughs> so go go check out that one Every, season show. Everything should do Quarry, <laughs> but you should just watch Quarry because it's so good. But there's just this idea that Bobby doesn't fit into society, and the you know the and the country, or in this case, the planet she went to kind of defend. She came back, and all of a sudden, it doesn't feel like the planet she left to defend in the first place. It feels like it doesn't want her, and yeah. very it, all of this really fascinating stuff. It's doing some cool character work, and. It's uh, it's kind of exciting to watch. There's just you know, there's all this stuff going on. It, it, Expanse has always had some great action. It's had some great you know stuff like that. You know, it's had big battles in space. It's had you know even almost horror scenes with a proto molecule and stuff like that. 
Uh, but the the heart of it that really makes it all work is just how good the mythology and the politics are between all the different entities and within the entities, you know. So it's one thing with Mars and Earth with each other, and now this season almost we're exploring within the OP OPA on their own like, with each other, Mars on its own within itself with each other, Earth on its own within itself with each other. Whereas it, before, it got a lot more introspective. Yeah. So I don't know it was fantastic. I can't wait to watch episode five. Yeah, I'm digging all of these things. Like, you know, like I said you, you and we both love the the, the belt stuff. And they said, I've been loving the Mars stuff. I mean, no, I mean, like, I mean, I love the Mars stuff too. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny because I think not not this episode, but out of the last one or episode two, I think I left the episode not feeling enthusiastic about it. But through talking about it, I ended up really liking it because it, it 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 led to a lot of mythology discussion, um, and I realized I all think- I realized all the things that it actually kind of neatly introduced without being. It it feels like slower episodes right now again mm. uh, I, don't, I don't think they necessarily are but it feels relatively slow like there's a ton of action going on and because uh, expanse it used to be like every three episodes space battle or something, and there's not really any of that at the minute um we're so get- i think in that context come i think we're getting there although i don't think it'll be space battles i think it's going to be more because everyone, oh, sure. it's, it's going to be battles on the ground on on new terror it's going to be battles you know, in Mars between, you know, it's, it's going to be all these introspective battles. Now, admittedly, I do think at least a couple of the plots will converge by the end of the season a little bit. I, I feel like, I feel like someone's going to end up on this planet at the end, possibly because if Bobby ends up working with these people who are selling stuff to the OPA, I, I can, I can see her almost ending up in that planet by the end of the season, you know, I for can. the finale. I can see her being there for a couple of reasons. Either A, she becomes the contact, the go-between, or she uh, you know whatever happens she has to you know it's you know she has to flee mars and she doesn't know where else to go she knows the rossi crew has uh, gone through so she goes to them uh, or, or that or she could literally be the rescue like maybe like you know the situation gets bad and they can't you know like we, i mean it's already like just amos and holden versus like murtry's entire group like yeah i think i think we spoke already the idea of a vassarala going look i know you don't want to you know work with me you know, work for me it's not pity but, but you need to save yeah. like like yeah. Holden and Amos and Naomi, and especially Alex, because you really like Alex. <laughs> like you have to yeah, go. And- I just, I don't know who else to send out there, because obviously she's dealing with her own problems in the UN and kind of fighting on two fronts. Maybe she won't have the political power to just send whoever she wants. So yeah. It's like, okay, Bobby, you're the only one I can actually send. Yeah. Um, which would Again, be in- which would be interesting to have. I mean, not that. Bobby would be there in that capacity, and technically Alex is also Martian. But it would be interesting to add a add a Martian to the mix because it's mainly humans and or humans. It's mainly Earth Earthers and OPA. Uh, it it on is there. primarily, yeah. Because yeah. um, I say Alex, uh, as much as he is a Martian, he he doesn't feel like it in the same way that yeah. Like it's does. it's part of his history, but he's not like actively constantly feeling Martian. He's, he doesn't talk like Bobby does. He doesn't. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and I think in that con- again, this might not be the way it goes down. But if a Vassarol does have to send. Bobby either. It, it would stop Bobby feeling pitied in that context because the Vassarola wouldn't have any other choice. It wouldn't be like, oh, I'll just I'm do it. Would, it would feel like she's contributing something meaningful. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, we were really hoping Bobby would stick with the crew and maybe, like, she's just not quite learned that that's like, you know, maybe if Mars isn't home anymore, she has to go through the journey of realizing that. Yeah. And she has to go through the journey and maybe she realizes that home is kind of what she builds and. Because, cause, I mean, the, the Rassi is kind of, you know, technically it's mostly Earthers, but they're not really operating strictly for Earth. It's a very kind of... Yeah, it's weird, because they're kind of on an official envoy mission from UN uh, right now. They are, they are this season more so, probably, yeah, but, like, in past seasons when they were kind of, like, you know, on the run and no one really liked them. <laughs> like, like the OPA kind of gave them shelter because Earth and Mars both wanted them either dead or captured. Like, you know, yeah. there was a lot of time when they were kind of working just outside of everyone. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so they still kind of feel, even though technically, yes, like they're approved by a Vassarala and therefore. But, but you feel like they don't have any distinct loyalty just to Earth because yeah. it's Earth. Yeah, they, they've always felt that like they're trying to just save like everyone when it comes to Proto Molecule, right? Yeah. You know, they're here and, you know, they, they, you know Amos jumped in when Murtry started shooting, you know, Belters down here. He's like, no, you, this is bullshit. And even Amos feels that way. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a yeah. there's a moral core, damn it. And um, you know, I feel like it's a it, moral core in Amos's case, but it's there. Joe, you know, Joe you know is so good about expands. 
in a weird this is a weird thing is to compliment someone for it almost isn't that impressive at face value sometimes like i feel like when I, i'm talking about mr robot or we're talking about twin peaks or we're talking about uh like watchmen or, or breaking bad or better call Saul, like, i feel like those are all more kind of like obviously flashy, flashy. yeah there you go <laughs> uh whereas this it almost feels like it is more a typical tv show but then you actually stop and pay attention to what it's doing and it's actually very very smartly building a lot of characters who have really understandable motivations that all interconnect with each other a mythology between several um civilizations and peoples and how they all interact with each other but also themselves and on top of that has the action the effects and all the you know like it's it's, it's, it's a really smartly written show that does it very subtly <laughs> Which I- it does. I think that's you know, like we've just spoke. I don't know how long we've been speaking now on this episode, um, but it's it's impressive that like, like there's very little action in this episode in terms of okay exciting stuff. It's the, it's the, it's the small stuff I love. There's a, there's a moment with Ashford in this episode where he just has this look. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's when he's he's back to Marcus. And Marcus is sitting, you know, it's just in that scene where he's going to try and trick him to like, tell them too much information. And there's a moment where uh, when he offers something and Ashford just kind of makes this face as he's looking at the monitor. It's just this great look. He's, he's it's great. Um, there's a there's a bit like where, where Marcus is like, oh, they're taking a while. And, you know, and, and, and Ashford kind of brushes it off. And then, you know, and then, he, you know, he, again, and he looks concerned and you're like, is he concerned something's wrong? Yeah. He's like, it's an old ship. Do you, and Joel, do you know, I love a bit Strathern here, uh, David Strathern who's playing Ashford, is that I saw him, I mean, I probably saw him in things here or there before uh, Expanse, but sure. um, I saw him pop up in Fast Color uh, earlier this year. Um, yeah. He was in a movie and he was using his real voice in that, usual accent, uh, which is just, you know, typical American accent, whatever. Um, and the weird thing is, is that he does such a good, unique accent for for Ashford that it obviously mixes with the Belter accent, but like it's so distinct. It's like it, it's what I feel like you, sh- you should sound like. <laughs> like I'm like this feels so natural. I'm I'm with you. It's I think we've spoken this before. It's it's like a, a good example of like Christian Bale, right? You know, when mm. when you hear him with his real voice, it kind of sounds wrong because you're used to his his movie voice, his his accent. You know, his American accent that he puts on. Yeah, yeah. What well, one? Well, I because he puts it on in everything. You're just that's what he sounds like. Yeah, he still sounds okay. I mean, I, I think David Stratham still sounds like a normal. But the, the one that always gets me is uh, Wesley from Angel and the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Because not only am I not used to his real accent because he does an English accent for the character, his American accent actively sounds fake. Like it sounds wrong and put on. Yeah. Uh, I no, I've heard people say that about Christian Bale. Uh, Americans mainly, to be fair. Mm. Uh, but I have heard that said about that. And again, it's that, that idea where you get so used to hearing them when when it sounds so believable that you're just like, of course, this is what this person sounds like. And and that's, uh, you know, Ashford here. Like, of course, this is what this guy sounds like. That's fantastic performance. I'm, I'm so glad he wasn't a one and done. I'm glad he stuck around. Yeah, uh, he, was, he was a wonderful addition to the show. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I mean, that's the episode. I mean, we talked about all the, all the various bits, I think. Uh, so... Yeah, that's episode four. So, by all means, let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments below. Uh, we have officially kind of moved to a, a every other day schedule, mainly because we know that this is going to overlap with two other shows that are both binge shows. We're going to overlap with Witcher, which starts... Uh, but I mean, by the time this goes up, it'll be starting t- today. And then uh, Lost in Space is hitting next week as well. So there's going to be like three alternating uh, uh, streaming shows. So we can be more consistently on the ball with getting expanse out if we if we stick to every other day um and we might speed up admittedly by the time we get to the end but probably not it'll probably just be every other day from here so um but hopefully hopefully we'll keep them consistently coming um and we'll see you next time for episode episode five so uh yeah so uh, like subscribe ding the bell on youtube for the notifications uh get us on the twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates if you want to support the show rate the audio podcast on apple podcast more people will find us that way well if you give us a good rating that is uh five stars usually the one you want to go go for uh you can also rate us financially rate us financially <laughs> You can support us financially at patreon.com slash TV for as little as $1 per month and keep all the content coming and get some bonuses for your troubles so we'll have a look and see what's on offer. Uh, but otherwise, that is us. And as I mentioned, uh, Witcher and Lost in Space Season 2 are hitting, uh, which are not on this audio feed. If you're on the audio podcast feed, there's two TV review feeds. There's this one, which is just almost cancelled TV reviews. 
and then there's almost cancelled tv netflix reviews or whatever it's called it's around that it's netflix it's almost cancelled and netflix are there they're right? that's that's the two key bits you want um, that'll find it if you search yes uh and that has all the netflix shows that we do so uh if you want to go find those go and have a look there but uh that is us so thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching tv guys have you got any vanilla